AP2 is one step closer to parity with AP1. The Tesla data sharing policy is updated. We find another hidden counter in the car and more. Here are your Tesla tidbits for May 8th, 2017. Another new update to Autopilot 2 cars has brought AutoSteer finally to parity with Autopilot 1 vehicles. Both platforms now permit AutoSteer to be active on highways up to 90 miles per hour and off highways up to 5 miles per hour over the speed limit. If a speed limit is not detected by the vehicle, the limit is set to 45 miles per hour. While not in the release notes, head of Autopilot Chris Latner tweeted that the performance and feel is much improved as well. In other improvements, the automatic emergency braking update was more widely pushed, auto high beams have returned, and enhancements have been made to side collision warnings. Side collision will now actively steer away from an object it detects, and this feature is active between 30 and 85 miles per hour. In back-to-back stories here, I'm going to both laud and bag on Tesla's communication. First, the lauding. Tesla recently put out an update to their privacy policy to allow for the collection of snippets of video from the vehicles to assist with training the neural net for autopilot. A rather long quote from the update here, quote, We are working hard to improve autonomous safety features and make self-driving a reality for you as soon as possible. In order to do so, we need to collect short video clips using the car's external cameras to learn how to recognize things like lanes, street signs, and traffic light positions. The more fleet learning of road conditions we are able to do, the better your Tesla's self-driving ability will become. We want to be super clear that these short video clips are not linked to your vehicle identification number. In order to protect your privacy, we have ensured that there is no way to search our system for clips that are associated with a specific car, end quote. And then now the other side of the coin. As we've seen with the power limiting situation, Tesla hasn't necessarily been upfront about policies that customers may find um, undesirable. It turns out that not only was there a counter on performance usage characteristics, but one on charge characteristics as well. After a complaint by an owner on a road trip using several different superchargers and only receiving a top speed of 90 kilowatts rather than the possible 120, he took the car in for service and posted the response from service to the Tesla Motors Club forum. Quote, Supercharger general diagnosis conclusion. No trouble found. Review vehicle logs and verify charging is topping out at a lower rate than observed on earlier DC charging sessions. According to Tesla engineers, once vehicle has been DC fast charged over a specified amount, the battery management system restricts DC charging to prevent degradation of the battery pack. According to Tesla engineers, this vehicle has seen significant DC fast charging and now has permanently restricted DC charging speeds. Important to note, supercharging will always be available to the vehicle, and the battery pack has not yet experienced significant degradation due to the amount of DC fast charging performed on the pack up to this point in time. Vehicle is operating as designed, end quote. Needless to say, people were a bit upset. Now, it turns out that the owner in particular was no typical owner. He tells us that he's accumulated nearly 6,700 kilowatt hours of Chatamo fast charges over about 250 uses, and another 50 to 60 supercharger uses. Tesla responded to the concerns, saying, quote, The peak charging rate possible in a lithium-ion cell will slightly decline after a very large number of high-rate charging sessions. This is due to physical and chemical changes inside of the cells. Our fast charge control technology is designed to keep the battery safe and to preserve the maximum amount of cell capacity, range capability, Capability in all conditions. To maintain safety and retain maximum range, we need to slow down the charge rate when the cells are too cold, when the state of the charge is nearly full, and also when conditions of the cell char- change gradually with age and usage. This change due to age and usage may increase total supercharge time by about 5 minutes and less than 1% of our customers experience this. Tesla is not slowing down charge rates to discourage frequent supercharging. Quite the opposite. We encourage our customers to utilize the supercharger network at their discretion and we committed to doubling the number of worldwide chargers just this year. We also want to ensure that our customers have the best experience at those superchargers and preserve as much vehicle range as possible, even after frequent usage." End quote. The problem here isn't necessarily the policy, so much as it is that Tesla has again failed to communicate this to owners. Hopefully they begin learning these lessons and doing better. On a much lighter, happier note, the Easter egg shortcut teased a while back has arrived. It's a simple one. Simply go to the car's information screen by touching the Tesla logo at the top of the center screen, and then pull down from the top of the car information screen. 
Lastly tonight, from the If It Weren't So Desperate It'd Be Funny department, it seems that the Connecticut Automobile Retailers Association, known as CARA, is pulling out all the stops to try to discredit Tesla in the state before an upcoming vote on allowing direct sales if the claims from the company are true. VP of Business Development Darmid O'Connell claimed this in a letter to lawmakers asking them for their support to sell in the state. From the letter, quote, Indeed, Kara has learned this firsthand when it sent secret shoppers to the Greenwich Gallery in a failed attempt to trick our local employees into selling them a vehicle. Despite these fake shoppers' repeated requests, our companies did not sell them a car or take their order. What our employees did and what they continue to do is educate visitors about Tesla, its cars, and other products, and broadly about electric vehicle technology and its many benefits. It is a basic constitutional right for Tesla to be able to communicate with Connecticut residents about these topics. Ironically, even this limited non-sales activity is too much in the eyes of Kara, which is seeking to entirely shutter the Greenwich Gallery, end quote. Electrek says that this isn't Kara's first underhanded tactic in the battle. They previously created a site called teslacrash.com, filled with pictures and articles related to benign accidents attempting to discredit the company in the eyes of the state and its people during the first attempt at getting this law passed. As with all of these sales battles, we'll keep a close eye out for the results. You can find links to today's full stories in the show description. This show operates on a value-for-value model. If you get some value out of what I do each day, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash Tidbits. Many thanks to super patrons John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, Cookie UK, John Waller, and Mark and Sarah Thomas for supporting the show at the $10 plus level. Also thanks to yet another new patron, Adam and Oz. You guys have been awesome in the past month. Thanks so much for your support. As I always say, if you have nothing extra to spare, it's no big deal. If you could take some time to share your positive feedback and or subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and other services across the internet, it would be greatly appreciated. Lastly, if you're in the market for a Tesla, you can get yourself $1,000 off while supporting the show and super patron Drew Schuyler by using the referral link ts.la slash andrew1233. That's it for today. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. I'll see you all back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.